Well, we have more breaking news. The Wall Street Journal is reporting tonight that Michael Bloomberg's campaign has reached out to former Democratic presidential candidate Andrew Yang, courting his endorsement and floating the possibility of Yang being his running mate. If only we had Andrew Yang here. Oh, hi, Andrew Yang. Hey, Anderson, how are you? <laughs> hey, Andrew is now a CNN political commentator. Uh, obviously, uh, I, I know the kind of person you are, and you're probably not going to talk about a private conversation. What can you say about this, or what would you want to oh, say? Well, what I can say is that uh, multiple campaigns have reached out, and it's flattering to be considered uh, for a VP role or any role in, uh, in uh, someone's um, campaign, um, I made clear to every other candidate that I ran on a set of issues, automation of jobs, an evolving economy that we need to humanize, and a dividend of $1,000 a month for every American. And I said that if a candidate were to make a significant commitment in those directions, then I'd be much more enthusiastic about considering an endorsement. So you didn't really indicate yes or no to anybody on anything other than these are the issues I care about, I would like to see those issues? Well, I, I've publicly said a couple of things. Number one, I will support whoever the nominee is. And number two, uh, I am very enthusiastic about having uh, the, democracy, the democratic process play out and uh, to decide who the nominee is. Uh, but also, if someone decides to support the ideas that were central to my campaign, mm -hmm. that would go a long way towards uh, making me consider an endorsement. All right. Um, Andrew's going to stay here. Van Jones is here as well. Gloria Borger as well. Um, new reporting in the Times, uh, Van, that uh, I want to ask you about. The, uh, the the Democratic Party officials appear ready, essentially, to risk intra-party um, uh, damage. Uh, Hiroshima. Uh, Ajita, Ajita, I don't know what you would call it. To, yeah. to stop Bernie Sanders getting mm -hmm. the nomination. Yep. Super delegates coming in. How serious uh, is this? Uh, well, look, I mean, it, it's hard to know. Most of these people are not being quoted on the record, but... Um, They're also saying that, look, yeah. these are the rules, and it's sure. rules that Sanders sure. wanted uh, and... Wrote. Yeah, sure. Well, listen, here's the deal. There's, there's the rules and there's the norms. The rules are that on the first ballot, you, if you don't get the majority, there's something called the second ballot. And the second ballot, other people get a chance to vote. But what has usually happened is, if you're close, um, you know, Hillary was close in 2016, and then Bernie gave her the delegates to get her across the finish line. Um, they didn't, they, he didn't go into a brokered convention. Uh, I think Obama was in a similar situation, and Hillary helped him. So the, the norms are that if you're close, then you know, everybody gets you across the finish line. What's going to be interesting is, yes, Bernie did agree to these new rules, but there's a new set of norms that may show up that may make this co convention very, very interesting. Gloria, I mean, if, if Senator Sanders has a leading plurality of delegates right. going to the convention, the nomination goes to someone else, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess it depends how close they were and how close is close, but, right. I mean, doesn't the Democratic Party risk alienating all his supporters who could very Absolutely. well, you know, just say, I'm staying home? Absolutely. And, of course, a lot of this, then, would depend on how the candidate behaves. If the candidate says, for the good of the country, and Bernie Sanders, by the way, if... I don't know if it would be Bernie Sanders doing this, or would it be Joe Biden doing this, or would it be Bloomberg doing this? But Bernie Sanders has publicly said he's going to support the Democratic nominee, period, because beating uh, Donald Trump is more important. But it does depend on what the candidate does. So if Bernie Sanders, say it is Sanders, and he were to say to his, to his folks, you know, you've got to do this. This is for the good of the country. He can't, he can't make them go out and vote, and I think that would be a real worry, mm. but he could make a convention a little calmer. But if it does go to a contested convention, I'm with Van. There's no, you know, there's no way to avoid what could be a very, very ugly situation that could be ultimately damaging in the fall. Andrew, if, if Vice President Biden wins in South Carolina, comes in first, how big a help is that for him for, for Super Tuesday? And conversely, if he doesn't win, uh, I mean, is how, how bad does that hurt him? If Joe did not win South Carolina, it would be devastating to his campaign. He would still stay in for Super Tuesday, I would assume. Yeah, it's only three days away, right. but it would be devastating. But I, I know Joe's very, very confident, and every indication is that he is going to win South Carolina. The two factors are, what's his margin of victory if he does win? And number two, how much press coverage and momentum does that give him heading into Super Tuesday three days later? I would expect that he does win. I think he wins significantly. And I think it does give him a burst of momentum heading into the 14 states on Tuesday. Van, I mean, it certainly gives him something to argue, which is, you know, the most diverse race so far. I'm, uh, you know, I mean, look, I he's, he, he's, he's done this rope-a-dope strategy. 
I'm just going to get beat up in all these other states, but in South Carolina, I'm going to show you what I'm made of. And so if it comes tr true and he does great and he wins by 10 points, uh, it can't help but give him a little bit of a boost. Is it really a rope a strategy? I mean, he's just laying there getting beat <laughs> up, yeah, man. But what was that to let the other guy get tired out? Well, that's why I'm like, I, listen, I'm doing the best that I can. <laughs> Nobody can figure out this guy's strategy until now. So hopefully he wins well, South Carolina. The closest thing to the rope dope was when he said at the New Hampshire debate, he's like, yeah, I'm probably going to lose here, too. <laughs> <laughs> Anderson, yeah, go ahead. you know, I, I was uh, talking to somebody who's very close to the campaign and involved in the campaign who said to me, here is their strategy, which is, um, they have to win big in South Carolina, and that means double digits. So it depends on how everybody ends up defining, uh, defining big. But then going into Super Tuesday, they have to come in second overall because what they want to do is do better than Bloomberg, and they want to be the alternative to Bernie Sanders. And they figure out that is a way to do it. They believe they could win a couple of states, maybe Alabama, maybe North Carolina, who knows. But they have no money. Anderson. I mean, yeah. no money. And they're hoping that the momentum they would get out of a out of a win in South Carolina would also come with a lot of money attached to it. But don't forget, Bloomberg has unlimited money and Bernie Sanders does, too.